What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back. And from Rolling Stone, Rumble's deal with academics is a sign of the hip hop world's right wing impulse. So when they say right wing, they just mean somebody that they don't like, somebody that doesn't agree with what they're saying, somebody who is pushing back on their narrative. That's right wing. If you don't want to cut the junk off a little boy, then you're a right winger. We've gotten to this point where right wing simply means common sense. But that's par for the course because, as we know, the establishment hack shill left will change the definition of words constantly so it fits into their bizarre narrative. Anyhow, the popular streamer is only the latest rap media figure to drift into conservative talking points. Yeah, okay, fine. Right? Did you? Is it surprising for Rolling Stone that most rappers and hip-hop personalities— to be sort of manly, sort of alpha, and not really wanting to talk about all your LGBT cut the junk off little boys talking points? Is that really surprising to you? So yeah, I guess you can call them right wing if you want, but it's just common sense. On Monday, rap rock and tour, uh, rock and tour, and they're trying to throw these big words in there to make it seem like they're going to say something smart, but obviously they are not. Academics announced a partnership with rising media platform Rumble to live stream exclusively on the platform three to five days a week. In a statement, Academics expressed, quote, I look forward to being one of the first to bring music and cultural conversations to a platform like Rumble. There have been many bad decisions at larger platforms where they haven't put creators first and they are disconnected from the community. I feel now is an inflection point for streaming platforms. I couldn't be more excited to lead this effort on a platform that puts creators first. Yeah. So why it, it, what Rolling Stone is doing here is making it seem like simply because academics is going to rumble, he's right wing, which maybe he is. I don't know the man's politics. He's filthy rich, so he's probably a little bit right wing. But of course, right wing simply means common sense at this particular point in time. But why is it not OK? Why, what, why does it happen that any platform that will even tepidly accept free speech automatically becomes right wing it's because the establishment hack shill left wants to silence any dissent right no matter how bizarre what they're pushing is whether they're telling you that you got to get this pharmaceutical or you can't drive a car or you i mean the list goes on that's not the point here but no matter what they say if you disagree even a tiny bit you will now be called right wing look at don lemon who i can't believe i've actually defended and defended in recent months, because as much as I can't stand the man, he says a couple things, right? He only gets 99 out of 100 talking points, and they hate him for that. So why is it bad that academics can bring a point of view that maybe the typical Rumble viewer is not used to, right? Wouldn't you want more voices on Rumble? Obviously, no, they don't. They want less voices because every with every every bit of pushback, their facade cracks a little bit more, and that's why they're so extreme, and that's why they're so, you know, censor happy. The Toronto-based company, which was founded in 2013, came to prominence recently after offering a platform to controversial podcaster Andrew Tate following his ban from YouTube and TikTok. The deal for a show aptly titled Tate Speech is reportedly worth millions. Earlier this year, the company announced an exclusive partnership with Donald Trump Jr. for a bi-weekly live stream show titled Triggered with Don Jr., while some of its biggest stars are less overtly conservative, like Russell Brand or Glenn Greewald, the site has become a haven for right-wing commentary thanks to its positioning as a counter to so-called woke platforms that often flag and remove content deemed to be harmful or to contain misinformation. So in one sentence, they, they step on their own toes. So some, the site has become a haven for right-wing commentary thanks to its positioning as a counter to so-called woke platforms. But big, some of their biggest stars are less conservative. So it's not about conservative. It's not about liberal. It's about maintaining the facade. It's about maintaining and even gaining more control. And they hate it. I mean, these Rolling Stone, bro, it used to be like about music, right? Where you could just, and I guess this is loosely about music because academics built his following talking almost exclusively about rap but 
Why can you not just stick? They have to put politics into every single thing. And it's not like they're just going to discuss it and let everybody have their point of view. They're going to smear and rake everybody over the coals who doesn't immediately capitulate to all their weirdo talking points. It's disgusting. A Pew Research study found that 76% of people on the site identify as Republicans or lean toward the Republican Party. The survey, uh, the sur- they, they surveyed 200 prominent Rumble accounts and found that 22% of them were previously banned from other sites. Yeah, and that, that is scary. Yeah, somebody who didn't agree with forced pharmaceuticals or somebody who questioned the 2020 election, that was enough to get you banned. So Rolling Stone is going to frame it as though, well, see, they're so bad, they got banned off other platforms. I've had videos removed off YouTube for reading a New York Times article that basically was lambasting Christians for not getting the juice, even though they very blatantly ignored another group of people that were largely less eager to get the... I don't even know what you can still say anymore, but that's a different point, and I digress. Moving on. Chris, uh, CEO Chris Pavlovsky, Pavlovsky has said that with Rumble's relatively hands-off moderation t- standards, he wants the service to differentiate itself from platforms that embrace so-called cancel culture. In a press release about academics, about academics' acquisition, he said, academics is one of the most influential personalities in hip-hop and cultural world. Having him on Rumble sends a big statement to other platforms on how serious we are in getting into different channels of, of content, from sports to music to culture. The deal also exemplifies how conservative-minded hip-hop media figures have become. Into- and it, again, it's not that hip-hop figures have become conservative. It's that they are common-sense people, and you are trying to force them to believe stuff that they know in their mind doesn't make sense. And you think they're so stupid that you that you forcing a weirdo agenda on them and them saying, no, I don't want to do that, makes them right-wing. Look, I would, I would venture to say that academics, I don't, look, he took a picture with Donald Trump, right? And that, that makes him right when he's at a UFC fight, you know, sitting ringside doing rich guy stuff. And they just, I mean, they rake this guy over the coals, bro. And they completely don't even want to acknowledge the year. I mean, I was watching DJ Academics videos more than a decade ago. He didn't even show his face. I didn't know how fat and chubby he was until he had a show on Complex. Hip hop as a community is more conservative than many fans would like to admit. No, I think, I think most fans are fine admitting that. You guys are the ones that don't like it. The recent documentary, Fight the Power, How Hip-Hop Changed the World, showed that there are many anti-establishment artists who definitely call out white supremacy and contribute to left-leaning causes. Yeah, the hack shills. But too many artists in the major label orbit could be read as a lyrical, could be read as a lyrical towel right after Mitch McConnell's heart. What, what are you talking about? Honoring profit above all, demeaning poor people, all while espousing misogynistic and anti-LGBTQ ideas, even more overtly. Now, we're constantly told that we should uplift black voices, right? And everything is racist, but then this genre of music that is mostly black people holds some views that are directly in contrast with what they're forcing on people, and it doesn't matter. They don't even get a point of view. That, there's too many of them. Can you believe They have a, they, anti, give me a break, bro. You guys have twisted yourself into a pretzel trying to force these ideas on people that just don't want it, and it's all backfiring. I hope it backfires. I hope Rolling Stone goes the way of BuzzFeed News. Even more overtly, rappers have been inching closer to conservatives for many years. It may seem innocuous, incongruous, it may seem incongruous to see Meek Mill hanging with Trump Ally Robert Kraft, Kanye West joining forces with Nazi apologists and commentators like Candace Owens, again, a black woman, or Lil Pump campaigning for Donald Trump, but the brand of capitalist patriarchy at the root of modern conservatism has long permeated hip-hop. Yeah, again, it's simply common sense. A lot of these guys, they do, we we hear the story over and over again, they come from nothing, they get it out the trenches, they rob, steal, deal drugs to buy studio time, they build a brand, they build a following, however they gotta do it, And they don't have the same view that that you suspect they should have. And now you're mad about it. And now you're mad that one of the biggest personalities in hip-hop is going to rumble because rumble houses conservatives. Give me a break, bro. You guys are the ones that have pushed people out, 
right? You could have come to the table. You could hear out ideas. You could have discussions. But you guys are the ones that have pushed people out. You guys are the ones that have eliminated the middle ground of any argument, as well as eliminating the middle class. But that, of course, is a different story. Perhaps it reached a fever pitch when former when the former president, who symbolized much of what mainstream rappers bragged about, yeah, and there is five, six, seven-minute compilations of rappers dating all the way back to the late 70s or early 80s, I believe, name-dropping Donald Trump. But as soon as he, he you know, announced his run for presidency all the way back in 2015, he was immediately deemed a racist, and everybody just bought it. Well, not everybody, because that's how he got elected the first time, and Hillary wasn't ready, so they went ahead and fortified the next one. Um... <laughs> much of what mainstream rappers bragged about, only to reveal how those traits are entangled with fascism. They don't know what fascism means. The fascism, right wing, they're all, just, they're all just words that say, people that don't agree with us mean people that we don't like. That's all that means. There was plenty of anti-Trump motion from the rap world because they were told to, like YG, he didn't know what was going on. Even Cardi B, right? Remember her when she was like, oh yeah, I like Bernie Sanders, but then wants to complain about taxes because they don't know what's happening. They say what they're told. But his off-color energy and economy-first ethos applied to a segment of hip-hop fans that ultimately aren't that concerned with much more than money and bravado. Academics who previously, who previously streamed on Twitch embodies the conservative shock jock as a reductive adversarial patriarchal figure. Buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Academics is none of that. He's just a dude who had been making a boatload of YouTube videos for more than a decade now, and they're mad because they hate success because they want to do this weirdo, socialist, communist, cut the junk off kids nonsense. Um, amplifying the worst stereotypes of black people. Oh, is that right? Is that right? In his war on Chirac YouTube coverage, which is still up, how dare he cover? How dare he cover violence in Chicago? He <laughs> he called Chicago a quote cesspool of coons that live and breathe like cockroaches. Yeah, academics is funny, bro. You don't have to like all of his jokes. You don't have to agree with everything he says. But you want to pretend that this black guy, who I, I believe he's from Brooklyn or Jersey or something, is is the problem, I mean, he embodies the worst stereotypes of black people? Is, is that right? Is that right? So are, are you saying that he is an example of what you think a lot of people, a lot of black people are like, but you don't like him? So what does that really mean? This is all absolute nonsense, but like I constantly say, if you take any of their talking points to their illogical conclusion, illogical conclusion, it will undoubtedly, every single time, without fail, conflict with another one of theirs. So now they're mad at academics because he highlighted violence in Chicago and he shouldn't have done that. He should have just let, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a boatload of rappers out there who don't like academics for other reasons, but there's nobody's going to claim he's uh, a stereotype of the worst thing about black people and a patriarchal figure. It's all absolute nonsense that you guys made up because you hate to see success. And while he's framed the war in Chirac as his sophomoric attempt at satire, it was funny. I didn't watch all of it, but academics is pretty funny, right? He's, uh, he's carried that conservative pathology into his modern work. Again, conservative just means common sense at this point. You can look at people like Nancy Pelosi, who is 167.5 years old, telling you that a little boy can magically become a girl. You guys are the ones that push people away. And then you want to complain that they've got, gotten too conservative. And this goes on. They want to rake academics over the coals and call him a conservative, which he may or may not be. We don't know. But it doesn't matter because he is, as, as some kids might say, breaking the matrix, right? He's going over to Rumble because YouTube, you know, wasn't treating him right or whatever. And he ha he's, it's fine for him to do that. I don't know why they're so angry. Well, I do know why they're so angry. It's because a prominent black person is doing something that they think he shouldn't do. These are the same people who only a handful of years ago would would tell you that there was no such thing as a black Trump supporter. So it's all absolute nonsense. But thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe.